Michael. Um, I see that you're growing a lot of basil plants here, and I love cooking with basils, and I also know that you've got several unique recipes. But today what I want to talk to you about is what kind of soil do you use to prepare your basils, and just tell us a little bit about your basil bed. Sure. This one right here is prepared with um, organic mixture of soil. Um, I usually amend it with uh, turkey compost and um, granite sand. And uh, basil seems to be pretty um, happy with a rich soil. We've got several different varieties here. Um, one from Thailand is uh, holy basil. This is holy basil right here. We've got a purple basil, um, a cinnamon basil sweet basil, fairly unusual varieties that I actually got from uh, Ramona's basil seeds, an Iranian basil, um, a basil that a man sent her, Hungar Hungarian basil, yeah, exactly. So there's some very unusual varieties. Um, you know, as you can see, it's late summer, so they're pretty big. Um, they are flowering right now, and all of these flowers, of course, are more basil seeds right here. So this bed will continue to reseed itself year after year since we've got the nice raised bed garden, which will last me many years. I uh, put a lot of time into the soil, and, uh, and now this particular, these particular plants will reseed themselves. So for many, many years, it'll come up every spring. And uh, now you opened up a little segment that you received your basil seeds from uh, Ramona's Basil Seed Exchange, and you can actually go there, and if you have seeds to share or if you're a beginner and you don't have any seeds to share, all you have to do is just sign up and just post your wish list. If you have a particular basil seeds that you want, somebody in the forum may have those seeds, and they'll exchange them with you or just send you some free seeds. Michael now has another tip how he uses his recycle bin. Yep. Um, as you can see in this recycle bin, I've amended the soil with um, rabbit manure, which is a wonderful compost that we have over here. And I uh, just sprinkled the seeds in. And essentially, these recycle tubs that I got free as the city of Austin was getting rid of them um, are just like a great big pot. And since they're this heavy gauge plastic, they last forever. And uh, they're really good for growing basil in because it's a real small seed and you know basil's kind of a bushy plant so you can get a tremendous amount of production in a very small area because they will end up filling this whole thing out here so and this is purple ruffles basil i believe is is the variety that we have right here and it'll turn a little darker purple as the weather starts to cool so well wonderful and michael i know that you're now using uh, worm casting Yep. And you can also, also uh, yep. see an in-depth interview uh, with a worm farmer on my website. Uh, and how do you actually use your worm castings? And I know that you also use live worms. Right. Well, I'll just go ahead and put the worms in the soil to help aerate the soil and uh, continue the process of, of uh, adding worm castings. But I top dress the beds with the worm castings. Well, I've noticed that you have planted your basil next to your squash and your pepper plants. And why did you do that? Um, I do a lot of companion planting where you have one plant that will help um, help be a benefit to the other plants. In this case, basil's an aromatic. The oils in the basil, um, I think, help repel some of the pests that would affect my, my peppers and, and uh, squash to a certain extent. Um, since we're all organic here, we try to pair things together, which I've also done on the sides of these beds. I have basil on the, around my tomato plants, um, not only uh, for you know, a culinary sense that they go together, but they're good companion plants, and I generally will plant basil all around my tomato beds. And also, I, I've learned uh, through our, our basil experience that basil also enhances the flavors of the tomatoes, too. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah, they're good companion plants. They grow very similar, uh, you know, soil and light uh, requirements. Now, does it matter what type of basil you use, or are you just basically using a pretty basil and that you have extra seeds? Right. You know, I, I, uh, I personally really like purple basil. And so I always plant a lot of purple basils because they're very attractive. They work even as an ornamental in the landscape. But um, it seems like the variety of the basil doesn't matter so much, although maybe the dwarf varieties wouldn't be quite as successful because they just they, they don't get very big. But, uh, you know, most of your 
uh, Italian basils and Thai basils get a couple feet tall. So they met, there are nice hedge around the tomatoes, which of course will get to six or seven feet tall. So, so now, Michael, I want to also ask you, you cook and you also have a lot of unique recipes. Share one really unique recipe that you cook with basil. Well, my favorite one probably that I do, well, I make a, a lot of lasagnas, you know, so I love the unlimited basil supply, but my very favorite thing are fresh organic heirloom tomatoes that we also grow here on the farm. Um, fresh mozzarella cheese layered with the basil, sliced, uh, sliced the tomato so that you put it all back together and it looks like a big mozzarella basil oh. tomato again, but with yeah. the, you know, red, green, and white colors. And then I stick a uh, skewer of rosemary through the top of it to hold it all together. And then how do you cook it? You don't cook it, no. Oh, just, just drizzle eat. a little olive oil on top of it and just go to town. Wow, well you yeah. can get this recipe and the step-by-step how-to on RamonasBasilGarden.com in my recipe section.